If you have visitors coming to stay with you, your hospitality is about to be on the main stage. We want to help you shine. Meet us at the table for the pep talk to get you excited and prepared to host. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. Well, depending on what city you live in, your ears perked up more if you're a highly trafficked and touristy type of city. <laughs> if you're in Nashville or the Middle Tennessee area or Franklin. High demand. Get ready for visitors because people still love coming here. And just depending on where you live, you might be one that is in a hot spot. So, you know, I was talking to a girl from from our church and she moved here from California. And then I think within a couple of years of being here, got married. Mm -hmm. And so she invited all these family and friends from California. Okay. Thinking that what is the usual percentage that you get? 50, 60 I don't know. Oh, percent yeah, of yeah your, it is about half. I she think. got almost a hundred percent. Oh my god! And she said everybody was so excited to come to Nashville. Yeah. So that's a real thing. It like, is. Depending on where you live, sometimes people jump at a chance. Yeah. To visit. I mean, I've stayed with my friend from college that lives in Charleston lots of times. It's like, well, you really want to see her. Yeah, I do. But, yet but it helps that she's not. I'm in, definitely going to stay with her too. Yeah, Minnesota in January. Exactly. Or something, right. Exactly. Though I want to go to Minnesota. No, no shame on Minnesota. I want to go there in the summer, sometime. Watch out for skeeters. They're oh, alive and well. Okay. Well, it really is a privilege to have a place to invite others to come into your home for a meal or an overnight stay if you have the room. And we just kind of wanted to discuss how to best prepare to be a good Southern hostess, whether you were born Southern or not. That's good. Yeah, you do not have to be born Southern or live in the South to be a good host. <laughs> That's right. We're going to give a lot of ideas in this discussion, but the main thing to do is just do the best that, with what you have. Yes, your, don't, st your style. That's right. Your personality. Yeah. You don't have to have a certain square footage to be a great host or hostess. That's so good, Lainey. I love that. Well, your preparation will definitely make your guest feel expected and welcome. I know. So those little details really do kind of make you like, wow, they cared. Yeah. They really want me here. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to do too much if you're like not wanting them to come back too soon. You know, bring the balance, right? That's right. But yeah, who's coming? For how long? Like these are just some real basics to just stop and ask yourself. But all of it matters. You might tweak some things based on who's coming. Or you should probably tweak some things. Especially if you're hosting, you know, elderly in-laws versus... You That's know, right. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about. College girlfriends that are all bringing their babies with them. You know, I mean, like, hello. So <laughs> so many different needs. But mindfulness is the word I think of. Of just good. being mindful of what are the needs yeah. going to be. I love it. Trying to think ahead. Well, I think first and foremost, you know, you start surveying the space, right? So making space. I have a small home and I'm saying that but in comparison to other homes in the area. My home is not small, but no. if you look around to other places that they might have been staying in the area, it is a little smaller. The square footage is not. Yeah, but it works well for my family of three. Right. So <laughs> when my in-laws just came to visit, along with my sister-in-law and her three sons, I can't seat that many people in my living room. I'm just not set up and for And certainly that. can't sleep that many. Well, no, I'm not even I mean, talking about I guess I'm not even talking about I shouldn't sleeping say that. Right There's countries where that would not be unusual to have that many people sleeping. Right. No, I knew we were that my in-laws were going to stay with me, but the hang time was all going to be in my living room. Yeah. So, I just made sure my floor was clean. I had my rug very vacuumed cuz I have a dog and I just you know, I knew somebody's going to be sitting on the floor. On a pillow, maybe, yeah. or just on their bottom. Hopefully, yeah. it's one of the kids. I was going to say, teenagers, I mean, I love to sit. I still like to sit on the floor sometimes, but I loved sitting on the floor when I was like a teenager. Yeah. 
Hopefully a kid knows to give their a seat seat so up to an elderly, an elderly If they don't, that's a whole nother conversation on manners. We <laughs> might need to have for a whole podcast day. on that because I've seen that happen a lot in oh, this yeah. generation. But point out seats to people. Like not everybody might assume or recognize that the footrest can also be a seat. Like yeah. if you knew in your mind, okay, somebody can sit there. Well, that might not be an obvious seat to somebody Yeah, else. or if there's a little chair in the corner, they might think, do they use that? Do they not? Yeah. Is that okay? So just be like, you so you can sit there, you know, just point things out. Well, I want to, before we get too, too much into this, I came across a quote this week that I wanted to bring into the episode. Can oh, I, I do it. that? Do it. Okay, so this is a quote from John Chris. Chrysostom. I hope I'm saying that right. Chrysostom. He was an important early church father who served as Archbishop of Constantinople in the late 300s. Wow. This is an old quote. It's an old one. Make make for yourselves a guest chamber in your house. Set up a bed there. Set up a table there and a candlestick. Have a room to which Christ may come. Say, this is Christ's cell. This building is set apart for him. Wow. And I just thought, gosh, that's beautiful to have that mindset of serving Christ, you know? I think of that scripture where he says, you know, I was thirsty and you didn't give me water. Yeah. It's like, when were you thirsty? I didn't even drink. I didn't give you a drink. Yeah. Yeah. And it actually, in reading that, I was thinking, this reminds me of something else I've read about someone in the Bible. So I looked it up and I think that must be this story must be where Chrysostom even got that. Oh, okay. Quote. So this is from Second Kings chapter four. Okay. And this person who we read about here is not even given an like her name is not mentioned. Okay. She's known as the Shunammite woman. Okay. But this is the story. One day Elisha went to went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. Okay. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Hmm which is a candlestick, same yeah, thing. Yeah, So that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. That's awesome. And it just got me thinking of, yes, she was a wealthy woman, so she was able to build a whole nother room onto right. the house. Yes. But even if you don't have that the, ability to mm-hmm. build quarters for this yeah. man of God who's coming or woman of God, um, covering the basic needs yeah. in a room that's ready to for someone who needs a place to sleep yes. and stay is the whole gist exactly. of both of those. And so what was it? A bed, a lamp, a chair, and a table. Love it. I don't That's have, the a, I don't have a chair you... in my guest room. so. But you have other places it's... where one could sit and write or, yeah. you know, it's yeah. kind of like just making sure that they would have a place to eat off of or yeah. write, yeah. I think. Yeah. So... I don't know. I just love that. That's really cool. To think about, okay, they're thinking of getting all the basic needs covered, and Mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Because a lot of people, I think, feel frivolous in setting up a guest room. Like, oh, I should make it something else. Or, you know, oh, we've got two guest rooms or something. Yeah. That's really cool. It's very hospitable and Christ-like. Yeah. I love it. Open your door. Um, Well, anything else that you would say about like just surveying your space? Well, surveying the space. I guess I think even a little, sometimes even broader of like, okay, is this person that's coming able to walk upstairs? Right. Sometimes you don't have a choice of where you're putting them. Yes. Like I don't. But. Yeah. Unless you're on the sofa. Sofa city. But let's say somebody was coming. You could make that happen. No, it's not ideal. Right. (laughs) Yeah. But you could make that happen. Yeah. Um, and you don't have a full bath downstairs, but if, you know, you had to, you could have a washcloth and a yeah. basin, something, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yes. I know this sounds so elementary, but it's like. Just, just use what you've got. Use what you've got and think through what are the needs going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, also, I like to think about how long has this person had to travel to get here? So good. You know, like, yeah, you don't want to have a night full of activity if they've just gotten out of the car from eight hour drive. Exactly. And they're 60 years old. Yes. You're not going to be able to do anything and yeah. have fun. Yes. You need to have the you know, peaceful dinner at home or whatever. Yeah, that's a really good point because I think a lot of times when we have people staying with us, we've got like our favorite restaurants and things. That Can't we wait to get them, them to. And they might not want to run back out the door, yeah. at least for that first meal. That first if night. If they've just traveled in. That's a really good point. Yeah, so just kind of thinking through things like that. Do they have any limitations, be that allergies mm-hmm. to foods mm-hmm. or down pillows or... Mm-hmm. Are they sensitive to candle smells? Like, just if yeah. you know this, you if might you know not it. know yeah. it. And I don't yeah. want to overwhelm somebody. Like, oh, my gosh, I don't know. So I yeah. just can't do this. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, things to think about. Mm-hmm. But I think for the most part, if it's somebody you don't know well, keep things neutral in terms of, like, scent. That's good. You know? Yeah. So, well, do, should we? can we talk about, like, guest room specifically? Sure. Like, the actual bedroom still? So, obviously, clean sheets. I mean, that's a given. <laughs> But, like, my clean sheets, you know, have probably been on the guest bed since I washed them last, and that might have been months ago. So I like to just freshen it up with a little linen spray. Oh, that's nice. And that company, 1818 Farms, has this counting sheep linen and room spray. It's just $12, but it lasts forever. And is it wonderful? And it is wonderful. I've never used theirs. You will be counting sheep. Okay. So that's a good one. What a cute name, because they have their cute little baby doll sheep. Oh, I know. (laughs) I was just thinking, too, it's, you know, funny that you even mentioned, like, building out a space. If you were in the real initial stages and actually building out a space, I think it is so smart to have in your overhead light a ceiling fan. Because oh my gosh. many <laughs> guests are hotter when they sleep than you might be. Yes. And that can be so easily controlled individually through a ceiling fan. Now, if they're colder, then just supply them lots of layering blankets. Yeah. But it's hard to get over if you are if you get hot in a room. You might not feel comfortable I opening the window. I think it's hard to get over either. Exactly. Really. Exactly. You know, and it's not even about the temperature of your house so much it is of the temperature in that person's body. Exactly. Yes. And so they you might could just think be a like, hot sleeper. oh, I've got it a great temperature in here. That's not even, mm-hmm. this is different than that. Mm-hmm. And I have a friend who's so used to sleeping with a ceiling fan on. Mm-hmm. I don't have a ceiling fan Mm -hmm. in a guest room. So even if you just have a little small fan or a box fan or something Mm -hmm. that you Mm -hmm. can have as an easy option for that person or vice versa, if you're in a drafty room, you might need a little space heater for the person who's always cold. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I do love the idea of choices of. Yeah. Everybody's so different. Like, you know, if you have just a light choice and a thicker choice yes maybe at the foot of the bed so that there's yeah an option for yeah. them to pick what and they need. my guest room is the best place for me to put my quilt rack and I have quilts that are old that I probably don't expect anyone to use but I also have a couple that are on there on the very top which that I'm is like so, use these and that's great because even let's say it's your in-laws yeah one may be cold and one may be hot, right so they right. even have choices yeah, yeah. That's great. Also in the room, I just like to go ahead and draw the shades for them Ah. so that it's already the darkest that it's going to be. I think, again, like a lot of times when you're in, whether it be a hotel room or someone's home, a lot of times you don't think through like how much lighting's going to be in the morning. Yeah. Or what this room looks like, you know, at the crack of dawn. Yeah. So go that's ahead and a good draw thing, the shades. Especially and... if they're coming in the dark. Yeah. Like if yeah. they're coming early in the morning yeah. and you yeah. want them to see the room nicely. Yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah. leave them open. But yeah. That's a good point. I love to leave some empty hangers in the closet. So that if they've got stuff they want to hang, yes, I've got space for them. If you don't have a closet, maybe you can um, just put, put a, a few hook hangers in yeah. the room. Oh, that's somewhere. true. With you even know, a few hangers, with on even it. a hanger on that, um, if it's you know not too gro- grotesquely in your in, <laughs> interrupting your vibe of your room. I love to leave water bottles. Okay, that's a big one. I think that's a great thing to do. And 
that doesn't have to be just for us like medicine takers at night. People just get thirsty. For you sure. Know? But especially if you know that they take meds. That they take meds. Yeah. And especially if you know they're probably not gonna if if you're hosting on the second level and you know they're not gonna want to come down for a drink of water. Or even know where you keep them. Yeah. Well, if you're in the yeah. fridge, I guess they would know so, that, but mine aren't in the refrigerator. Yeah. So yeah, especially if it's a second level or that's a great point. There's also really pretty um carafes that you can mm. purchase for i mean i've seen them you know from twenty dollars to fifty dollars yeah that have the little glass that fits over it so you can fill it up that's a put the point. glass over it it's not going to get dust in it or anything yeah. and yeah. then that's just sitting in the room where yeah. they can pour themselves a glass yeah it's another option and then if they wear dentures they've got a glass for their dentures <laughs> Right, <laughs> to soak them in. Sorry, that's y'all. Hysterical. Some of y'all know exactly really? what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes, that's very true. Uh, I like to just go ahead and pull bath towels out, put them either on the bed with a washcloth, or if they're getting their own bathroom, go ahead and put them in the bathroom they're going to be using. Yeah, it makes them there again. You feel like, oh, they're I'm not dirtying up their right. stuff. They expected me to use this. Yeah, and have the, you know, different people use different things washcloth hand towel bath towel yes. is nice to have all three. all three you don't know what they like yes. and have all that there yeah you know depending on how long they're staying you may need to freshen that up later yeah for but, sure a um, lot of people don't like to go more than one time but definitely not more than two, two times, times using on the a same. bath towel <laughs> yeah yeah especially right. a wa- definitely a washcloth <laughs> y'all need we need some options on the washcloth and i always try to put like you know yeah just a ba- I have a basket. I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but I have a basket that I just toss stuff in when I get hotel shampoos, conditioners, soaps. When mm-hmm. I go to the dentist twice a year, they give me a little small toothpaste and toothbrush and mouthwash and dental That's floss. That's so awesome. Yes. I mean, I don't need all that stuff unless I'm traveling. Right. Um, so I just put all of that in a basket so that when somebody comes if they've forgotten something yes for the most part I'm gonna have it yeah do you end up with in terms of the travel size of things do you end up for like one shampoo for every like five conditioners that you have (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what it is but I mean I'm always digging for shampoo I think it's funny. I guess different people's hair is different. I use them about the same, like personally. I do too, but I don't know what it is with... But my like mom uses such a tiny amount of conditioner in her hair that mm. I'm like, well, that's no wonder people... I guess if that's what people usually yeah, do... Yeah, that's true. Then that's true. they are going to go through shampoo faster. But Well, if anyone's ever looking for stocking stuff or ideas for me, it's shampoo. <laughs> just shampoo. Travel don't need size. the conditioners. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. But yeah, I mean, any and even if you've got some full size that you want to just go ahead and put a soap, I mean, oh, a, for sure. a shampoo and conditioner already in the showering area, that's good too. So one thing that will definitely make for a great experience for your guests and for you is if they have a great night's sleep and waking up feeling rested and refreshed is definitely the way to go. So we wanted to tell you about the softest most luxurious sheets from bowl and branch now each of these sheets with every wash starts to get softer they're 100 percent organic cotton we actually got the chance to experience them ourselves and i can tell you firsthand they came in the package they were super silky soft so much i didn't want to wash them but i did because i my mama told me when you get something new put it in the wash And so I washed the sheets and I ordered the color pewter, which was just perfect for my bedding. 10 different colors and all sizes. So if you guys are ready to sleep better at night with bowl and branch sheets, you can get 15% off your order when you use the promo code steelmagnolias at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowlandbranch, B-O-L-L. A-N-D, branch.com. Promo code Steel Magnolias. Exclusions apply. See site for details. We're so thankful they came alongside us for this episode. Yeah, so just making it, like, go in your guest room and be like, if I was staying here tonight, what would I need? What would I need? You know, what, yeah. Sleep in your guest room. Is it comfortable? Like, you know? Or, That's oh, a we, good point. And pillows. Let's talk pillows. I like to put three different, I have three different pillows on my on your guest bed guest bed there's a soft one that's a standard size a 
second standard size that's really I call Thicker. it the heavy pillow. It's okay. heavy, but it's like a firm. Okay. And then I've got a king size. Okay. Pretty middle of the road in terms of fluffiness. Okay. So depending on what size or fluffiness they want, they yeah. have choices. They've got choices. That yeah. is so smart. I don't yeah. have that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I say that. I do have two pillows on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have two choices, mm-hmm. but really not. They're not that different. Yeah. So that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten to the point where I like to just bring my own pillow if I'm a staying lot of people at do that. somebody's house. Yeah. I just love my pillow so much. So, well, yeah. So go sleep in your guest room or wherever you're going to be putting them up and see what you would want to change or to And update. also, um, we've mentioned this and we, we talked about something similar one time, but there are certain things that are embarrassing to ask for if you forgot. Mm-hmm. Like feminine on product. the feminine side, yes, <laughs> or that's true. Bathroom spray, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Lady. Things like that yeah. where you're like, just have it in there in yes. case they need it. If they don't need it, it didn't take up that much room. This is good. <laughs> I'm really glad you mentioned this because I think that a plunger should be accessible as well to your guests. You don't have to have it out, but if you have a way to at least put it in the bathroom, like under the sink, or that is so embarrassing. The place where they would know to kind of look. Yeah. Rather or than even, downstairs in a cabinet. Which is where mine are. Right. Yeah. Um, now, no, upstairs there is one. Yeah. That's pretty easy to see. Yeah. But for the most part, that and, and that is a mortifying thing to have to ask mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. Um, good point. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking of when somebody's had to ask me for one before. <laughs> Okay, so another thing I think of, of really making somebody feel, this is, now I'm kind of getting into fluffy over the top. Yeah. You don't have to do this. You absolutely this don't have Lainey's to do this. This is Lainey's spin on it. But there's a few things that are like, if you're able, really fun. Fresh flowers, mm. even if they're from your garden. Yeah. Or your yard. I'm not even saying it needs to be, you know, like right now I have a few daffodils. That you're are saying up. even if. That look, sounds like you're even more impressive. I grew these myself. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than I pick these up at Trader Joe's. Well, I really, you know, what I mean is it can be super simple. Simple. Evergreen. Yeah. Green. Something evergreen yeah. in the winter time looks yeah. cool. Yeah, but that's y- true. You know, it doesn't have to be that you stopped at All the fresh florist cut. yes <laughs> that's so true that's it's really been a good. fortune that's not what i mean but it does make somebody feel like oh my gosh they put that out mm-hmm. and i feel so cherished that's right same thing for and you're good at this Lara beth in your little bathroom that's downstairs in your house something seasonal is just cute oh i know you know i don't have a lot of that kind of stuff but i have a few little bunnies that i can put out at yeah. springtime yeah or you know yeah something seasonal i've upped my game because my mother-in-law has all seasons of just decor that's so. laura holman she has I a mean, closet that's only for the seasonal stuff yeah i'm like oh my yeah I and wish. if you don't, just start with a hand towel because that's functional and can be seasonal. That's so true. Or even those paper ones yes. that are cute. Um, they have those at Tuesday morning and TJ Maxx. Yeah. Those little towels yes. that are, you know, springy looking yes. or Christmas looking. Yes. Whatever. Okay, we got to talk food because that is well, probably yeah. the area that needs the most forethought because you definitely don't want to be in the kitchen the whole time you've got people that came to see you, right? So get, I would say, get one dish ready for the very first meal that you know you're going to share together so that, you know, you can either just reheat it or just pull it out or whatever. Yeah. And then have some lunch meat and, uh, you know, maybe a salad already ready to go, a soup that's ready to go that can be reheated. Um, and I would say if you've got a frozen meal, you can have kind of as a backup. In case have you that. thought y'all were going to a restaurant, now you're not. You're, yeah. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Like plans change all the Weather sudden. changes. Yeah. Where now you're not going out to the outdoor picnic. Now exactly. Now it's pouring down rain. So what are we going to yeah. do? Yeah. That's a great idea. And then I like to keep breakfast really simple, like muffins and 
fruit for the days that I'm tired and I don't want to get up and make eggs and bacon. Well, that's a good point. And that kind of stuff also travels well. If somebody's like going out the door yes. and they really needed a snack, a granola bar, a muffin, an apple. Yeah. It's very easy to throw Banana. in your bag. Yeah. Yeah. Have, co- like have coffee like and cream and sugar plus tea options. So that's what I was going to say. If you already know that this person is a tea drinker or a coffee drinker, it's mm-hmm. really nice to have that ready to go yeah. for them, whether or not it's the same as what you do. Right. Exactly. Yes. And then the only other thing I would say is have something that's kind of hearty that could be a snack in case like you had an early lunch and y'all don't have dinner plans till eight and you're like, oh, everybody's yeah. kind of hungry. I'm going to pull out this chicken salad and crackers or I'm going to yeah, pull yeah. out this pimento cheese and crackers girl that's another time to make a little small charcuterie yeah i love a charcuterie just have the cheese and salami and yes that's a great idea dried fruit yeah and if you get to it great and if you don't it's it's not gonna go bad yeah exactly so i love that kind of but i always feel like at some point especially if it's like a three-night stay there's always this moment where everybody's just kind of lagging or like you're just kind of waiting on the next thing some people are might be napping and people are just like i'm just kind of wish I'm i was famished yeah <laughs> i'm hungry yeah and i don't have a car to leave or whatever right. yeah so yeah another thing i would say is it's always good to kind of know as best you can what the expectations are are you just hosting like you're going to be working and they're going sightseeing during the day that's so true are you going with them to do all of this yeah. stuff yeah you know if you're just the place to sleep and visit at night and you're working and they're just Mm -hmm. seeing your town it's nice to already be prepped with like hey here's some of my favorite places to eat yes here's some of my favorite places to go yeah maybe you have that typed out or you could just swing by your visitors bureau and be like these are the best attractions right here's the brochure (laughs) and i starred my three favorites whatever yeah but um obviously if you're going with them they've got you to tell right them that that's but good. if you like don't that. it, that's a nice thing uh same for occasionally when i've had somebody staying i'll pull out i just have a couple of books that are about nashville or franklin oh, that's so smart and just putting them somewhere where like either in their room or on the coffee table where like if yeah. they want to look at it they yeah. can and if yeah. they don't no big deal but yeah as you're talking, I'm like, man, if you've ever aspired to have an Airbnb, this is all a great dry run of like Woo! things that you would want to install and so true. have out for your Airbnb guests. I love that. That's fun. Another thing I didn't mention when I was talking about my over-the-top fluffy things you can do. Mm-hmm. I think it's fun to have, um, well, again, who's coming? Is there a child? Mm-hmm. Is it, you know? Yeah. But something local. Like... Maybe a little um, Goo Goo Cluster if you're from Tennessee. Okay, something or like for them to take with them, or like a little... just a little nod to where yeah. where you live. Yeah. Um, if it's a child, you might want to do like a coloring book or something yeah. that, like, I know we have little local that have the some of the sightseeing spots. Mm-hmm. Just something where it's like giving them something to do, but also yeah, a little memory. Of yeah where they came i love it if you are hosting someone that's bringing their kids just ask them like are y'all gonna need a pack and play like where's the baby sleep these days or the kids sleep like just yeah get all that information that you can from the parents and you know again because they'll probably just be packing the their own snacks with what we know yeah but yeah sometimes they're bringing stuff and you don't have to sweat it yes or you if you know they're coming and you don't have a high chair, maybe you can borrow one for right. three days exactly. or something like yeah. that. That's always good. Here's a good pro tip for you, especially if you think you'll hang out at all at your own house. Think ahead on a movie that you're going to end up watching oh my together. Gosh. There is nothing more frustrating than and it's every time I sit down. <laughs> scrolling through the options with everyone from the toddler to the teen voicing their opinion on what they want to watch. Yeah. So it's nearly impossible these days, but think ahead. Uh, nearly impossible to please everyone is what I was going to say. But try and think ahead and have two options of movies that you want to watch that you know you've got that are either already, you know, they're on Netflix or whatever <laughs> subscription you know, or television options that you have. 
and those are your options. We're, we're watching this or this. So we're not it's scrolling so through and, you know, but that way if plans change or boredom sets in, all of a sudden it's popcorn movie night. I mean, and I, you know. Think, I think this is so brilliant. Think Sandlot, <laughs> Sing To. Uh, that has a great soundtrack for adults because that's why, so that's why I say that one. Uh you know, think non-cartoon, but family friendly. That yes. movie Clifford the Big Red Dog that came out not too long ago. It, it is a nice kind of one is that it works a, good a lot. One? It's okay. got some, you know, humor and it's not too babyish, but it's, you know, fun. And yeah, so it's cute. Get your two options. Well, I think that's so brilliant because it keeps the arguing down too. Mm-hmm. Of like, no, we just watched that. Like, right. okay, but it was this or this. Yeah. <laughs> like the TV's going to be on soon, and <laughs> these are the two things that might ap- <laughs> that might appear on it. Which one do y'all want? Yeah, yeah. I've even done that when I'm when I've been prepared. Just when Jacob, your son, yes. is coming over, yeah. because there's certain things that he likes to watch that get on my nerves for sure. And so if I just say. You want to do this, this, or this, mm-hmm. or just you know? Yeah. Then he yeah. hasn't already seen the five things that exactly. he wants to see that I don't. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Okay, I kind of can't believe we've gone this long without talking technology. Let's talk okay. technology yeah. a little bit. Yeah, it's such a part of our life now, for sure. Uh, are, you, are you talking like chargers and things? I'm or? talking just all things technology, really. Obviously, Wi-Fi. Oh yeah. Letting your Wi-Fi. They're going to need to know that right away. If it's a teenager, it's going to be in the first five minutes that you're asked this question. They didn't say hi to you, but they would love to know your password. Exactly. (laughs) They haven't even looked me in the eye yet. But (laughs) so having that maybe even already written down or something for the person is helpful. Yeah. We, I we, think one time we were talking about you could just have it in a frame. Yeah. We just have room. it stuck up on our fridge now for like babysitters that, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. So that's helpful. For sure. Uh, my house is old. So plugs are in weird places. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll tell people, hey, there's a plug right here. Okay. And there's a plug right here. So that if just so like they know, like, okay, if I need or... to charge my phone okay. or yeah. if I need to, you know, then. Yes. That, then good. I have nowhere to go because yeah. I don't want to have to move furniture to find it. <laughs> and it, it that's real here. Yes. when you have an old yes. house. I would even say if you've got, you know, how to use the remote, if that's, that's helpful. Okay. Like, because yeah. remotes are all different. Yeah. And security yeah. systems, do they need to know how to turn it on and oh, off? Oh, good Lord. And yeah. Just think through your technology yeah what do i need to have written down what do i need to make sure i tell them that's really good wow yeah it's just as smart as homes are (laughs) smart in quotes that is important because yeah there's so much that's on timers and voice activated yeah yeah you're right like i that's so funny no one would know how to turn on one particular lamp in my living room if i didn't tell them that it's only voice activated oh my gosh that's so hilarious. somebody would be sitting in a dark corner that's okay that's really good to remember so just, yeah yeah whatever your I love it things are i love it well i only have one other thing okay. and that it's kind of a send-off so did you have anything else that well i just had two other little notes one i probably should have said earlier and that is when everybody's getting ready to go to bed yeah i do think that's a good thing to just say is there anything you need before perfect you- yes because they're not going to come wake you up right if they forgot yes this question yeah or whatever or if, they really needed this thing yeah you know? if their persistent headache has not broken yeah. then yes they might ask for some tylenol or, yeah. Yeah, yeah tums whatever yes. like just say is there anything you need before we go to bed i that's think it's good. just a good question that's really good to ask and um then i always also on the last day they're with me mm-hmm. like to give any instruction if i need them to put the towels on the washer yeah take the sheets off the bed yeah any I, of that kind of stuff i actually prefer that they just don't do touch that. it yeah because when it comes down i feel obligated to then to wash now it. wash it and i maybe i wasn't planning on washing that today yeah well and everybody's different <laughs> Everyone's you know different, some though. people are like you know that if you i want to gather all towels at one time yeah or whatever but yeah. 
Yeah, no, you're right. Some people would think, oh, that was so kind of them to bring it down. That's one less step for me. Yeah, so yes. just getting clarity on what so the good. expectation is, is good. So good. to do Well, I think as a send-off, now, of course, this does depend on how your guests are traveling, but having Ziploc bags to throw in a few car snacks or oh that's good just things for them to travel with maybe even having some prepackaged little goodies for them to take with them if they're traveling by plane they will especially be grateful for this to not have to pay five dollars for a bag of lace popcorn chips. yeah <laughs> so yeah if you've got a couple of things that you could have as options if they want to take some good. car snacks or snacks for the airport with them and then I think it's really good if, as soon as they leave, if you can just shoot some pictures to their phone of the stay. So that's not also hanging over your head. That's cool, yeah. Or if, uh, even better, actually, if, you know, kind of, if you have any downtime right before they leave, um, you can, in your two iPhones, you can airdrop. Airdrop it. That's even actually easier. So um, if you have the foresight to think through dropping, airdropping photos, that's really good. But... Yeah, and that gives them something fun to look at if they're sitting That's in the so airport true. or, um, you know, if they're not the driver, they can look through them on the road trip home and and then you can get started on all, all that laundry <laughs> <laughs> that your house guests created. So anyway, well. Main thing is just just do it, as Nike would say, right? So just do it. Just You'll do it. get better at it as you do it. You'll think of more things as you go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just I mean, open your door. There's a scripture that says practice hospitality, and I really think it takes practice. A hundred percent. Like you just, you see things as you have people and you're like, oh my gosh, next time I'm going to X, Y, or Z. And I pick up on things as I go to other people's houses. Like, well, that was smart. Oh, that made me feel so warm. And wow. Yeah. 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 So anyway, well, those are our tips for you to get you prepared, excited, and just ready to open your heart and your home for some photos of the way that some of this beauty could look in your home follow us on instagram that's right at great Steel ideas. magnolias podcast and we'll be posting things even this week y'all have a good week peace be with you